After an epic battle, Supreme Calamitous was forced to retreat. Silas had finally broken his curse. While he was relieved to feel the darkness begin to fade, he could also feel the added power leaving as well. Silas knew he had to hurry and defeat the Exomex so he could harness their technology and teleport back home. As he traveled to face the mechs, he smiled for the first time in a while, imagining his upcoming reunion with Magnus and Anna. After all the adventure, danger, and curses, Silas was happy to return to Magnus's tower as chief librarian, and maybe even write some books of his own someday. This is the story of Silas the Summoner. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Silas the Summoner. Last episode, we fought the Exomex, but then we decided to fight Supreme Calamitous instead. So we defeated Supreme Calamitous and got three weapon upgrades. We've got the Cinders of the Lament right here. Whoa, I haven't even used that one yet. And then we've got this creepy one right here. Let's go ahead and test these out on an improved dummy and see how the damage is. So we've got about 50,000 damage with these birds and they're very fast, so they seem pretty good. If we use our Yarin staff, we're doing about the same damage, unfortunately. And let's see how much damage this thing does. Ooh, yeah, that's like 60,000 damage. This thing might be the best. Is it enraged on me? What are these little things? I need to read the tooltips, I think. So this creepy thing with all the hands will summon hearts that will begin to orbit around us. It will attempt to attack you more and more frequently depending on how many hearts are present. It might be something that you have to like keep summoning and then resummoning so it doesn't attack you or something. And so this one summons either Cataclysm or Catastrophe. They will look at you for a moment before charging at you. You can do damage to both you and enemies. Let's see how much damage this thing does. I have a whole bunch of them summoning. Does a little bit more damage. And I think that's pretty much all the upgrades we can do. So let's contact Drayden and summon all these little guys. Here we go. Let's do this. Uh oh, already taking so many hits. Those beams are the hardest part for me. Okay, we got to the second phase. Got rage. I can't tell what's going on at all. Okay, let's delete that guy and resummon them. I have no clue how far we are because there's so many boss health bars. I feel like I need to just delete my whole world basically and then just fight the boss with a huge area of my map. Okay, well, we got it to like 60%. So this is actually the next day, and this is not the world that you're used to. This is a world I got from Radium, because yeah, my world got corrupted. I went into T-Edit to add or subtract, I guess, a whole bunch of the ground from my world. And so I just removed a huge block, and then I tried to reload the game, and it had already done that glitch before, but then it did it again. And so I didn't really know what to do. I tried 
a bunch of stuff. I wasn't able to load any worlds, including like create a new one. So it was just totally glitched out. And so I let it sit for a day, restarted my computer, all that stuff and tried it again today and it worked. So I created a new world, loaded in, and then I was able to open up this world, which is like I said, from Radium. He's another Terraria YouTuber. You should definitely check him out if you haven't already. Let's give this a try. Um, I'm probably gonna give it a few attempts. If I can't beat it, I think I might actually be okay with that, but hopefully we can do it. So yeah, we'll just start slow here. We got hit by something. Okay, so he's shooting lasers. So we're doing about 20,000 damage per second. Ooh, we reached a new phase. This is exciting. What is going on here? Um, it just kind of <laughs> shot me with a laser. That was a little bit rude. It was like I couldn't get out of the laser. Wow, I survived. I think this is the farthest I've gotten in this part. Oh dear. I really need to get up higher. Oh no. Darn it. I did an accidental dash. Okay, well, we actually beat one of them. That's promising. I have a feeling, though, it is not going to get any easier, even though we only are fighting two now. I think it's going to be a heck of a lot harder, actually. Oops. Ah, oh, man. did a decent job there. Oh my gosh, these lasers. These are insane. Well, we got to the very end. This is a few days later and I actually got a recommendation to update to the current version of Calamity for 1.3.5 because this boss got reworked a little bit. So I wanna go ahead and try it out. Hopefully the boss is a little bit easier. The person said that uh, the boss was nerfed slightly. So let's give this a try again and hope for the best. So let's get up super high in the air initially. Oh, right there, it seemed like the beam actually was fairly obvious. Interesting, this is actually a lot more obvious, like what's going to happen. Huh. I can actually use rage and adrenaline at the same time. This is great. Yeah, this is actually going a lot better than before.
Okay. Back to this phase. Okay, that's my first heal. Taking a few more hits than I'd like. But this is a tricky phase. Okay, let's use some rage. Try to pump out a bunch of damage right here. Oh my goodness, lots of lasers. Okay, on to the next phase. Okay, well I'm familiar with this phase, just gotta do some circles here, keep dodging, no! Okay, that was not good. Hopefully we can, okay, we don't have to do that phase again. We just have to survive this one, which as long as we move quickly and can get to our Potion cooldown. We'll be fine. No! We have to survive. Okay, potion, potion. Here we go. Almost to rage. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Just a couple more hits. There we go, we defeated the boss. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And there we go. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of stuff. So we have exoprisms, we've got the Drayden mask. I wanna see what that looks like. It's actually pretty cool. And then we've got the Drayden's heart, reduces the amount of defense damage you take by 50%. Standing still regenerates your life quickly, reduces your damage by 50%, and boosts your defense by 75%. Wow, that's a very powerful defensive accessory. And we've got the Exobox. Materializes like a cozy, extremely nimble flying Exo Throne. Oh, it's a mount. Whoa, this is cool. This thing is like so precise. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then we have a rogue weapon, pretty nice. And, oh, another rogue weapon. We've got a melee weapon here. Whoa, that's cool. Whoa, and at the end it shoots all those effects. These are really nice. Whoa, <laughs> this is sweet. I love it. And we've got a ranged weapon. Oh, this is just like the thing that the boss was shooting at us. Man, these are some of my favorite weapons. Like, those are seriously incredible. And that was actually my first try after doing the update. The changes that they made, I think, made the boss fight way more fun. The way, like, the different hands glowed before their attacks, there was a little bit of a cue, so you didn't just have to, like, memorize or just keep trying over and over. Obviously, I was learning on the harder version, so it was probably more like try 20. Before we do any crafting, I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively purchase another Supreme Calamitous boss bag. Does the Exomech boss not have a boss bag here? Well, I guess we're gonna have to fight the boss again if we need more Exomech materials. But I do wanna craft a few of these final weapons. Oh, cool, we got the Perdition. 
that was a summon that I didn't get from my first fight with Supreme Calamitous. Man, that actually probably would have been a big help <laughs> when we fought the boss. That's really powerful. In order to do our next upgrades, we need to craft the Draydens Forge. It's the upgrade to the Cosmic Anvil, the Hard Mode Forge, uh, Tinker's Workshop, and Ancient Manipulator. Well, I've farmed up a bunch of materials, and now we can craft the Draydens Forge. It is pretty sweet. Let's put it on the ground so we can take a look at it before we put it in our magic storage. Yeah, that's pretty cool looking. I love the aesthetic. So this is what we use to craft exo weapons. So let's craft maybe two of those. So now we can craft the Cosmic Immaterializer. This is the exo weapon for the summoner. It's so cool. Oh look, we can craft the card of gods as well. It's a upgrade to our mechanical cart. That's fun. So this is an upgrade to the Elemental Axe, the Corvid Hairbringer Staff, the Ancient Ice Chunk, Energy Staff, and Miracle Matter. There we go. Now we can craft the best bars in the game, the Shadow Spec bars, its Auric bars, Exo Prisms, and Ashes of Annihilation. We can craft 11. So now we can craft the Temporal Umbrella. It's the combination of the Spike Crag Staff, the Saros Possession, an umbrella, a top hat, and shadow spec. So there we go. I did a review on this a long time ago when it first was released, and it is very cool. Um, and then the endogenesis. I remember this one was quite good as well. So it's a cryonic staff, blizzard, staff, endothermic energy, cores of Elium, and shadow spec. So we're out of shadow spec now, but we do have two really good weapons. So I think we should actually go and fight the Drayden boss once more, get some more exo stuff so we can craft our last few weapons. So it looks like we've got just enough slots to get endogenesis as well as the umbrella. I think this is going to make a huge difference for this boss fight. So let's go ahead and summon the boss. On the attempt that I succeeded, I used the middle one. I found that one was how I got my best attempts earlier. Our damage is way higher. Like not even oh my gosh it's not even close to what we were before we're doing like a hundred thousand damage at the beginning this is amazing i finally feel powerful as a summoner 140,000 damage right now this is great oops oh wow that was actually worked out the beam went right over us i didn't even know it would uh be negated by the ground Okay, well, we got Rage. Just activate Rage right there and blast through this guy. 150, 180,000. I think we might have broken 200,000 for a second there. Oh my gosh, the Endogenesis is so cool. I saw 200,000. Yeah, whoever commented that I needed to update this, there's probably multiple people who have commented by this point, but um, that was a huge improvement because I almost didn't want to finish this boss fight at all and just leave the series at Supreme Calamitous. But honestly, it made such a big difference just updating the game. There we go. Now we can farm this as much as we want, although I think we really have pretty much everything we need. So we've got the Universe Splitter. Flamesteed Ring. Sweet. Okay, let's try out the Universe Splitter. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Let's see what a test dummy in that spot would do. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's insane. That did like 1 million damage. And now let's use this. <laughs> this one I remember was really cool. Oh my gosh, look how many things we've got active. <laughs> 1 million, 200,000 I think is what we got there. This is so cool. There's also the one that turns you into Providence. Um, I forget how to get that one, but I think we've got pretty much all we need here with the Endogenesis and the Temporal Umbrella. In fact, just for the heck of it, we should try a little bit of Terminus just to see. Um, I don't plan on finishing Terminus, but I just want to mess around with some of the gear that we've worked so hard to obtain. Oh, it looks like you have to hold down Terminus now. 
You can't just click it. That's kind of a cool effect. Whoa, and it does like a cool thing in the background. I love it. Apparently the AI for these are like Malice Mode AI or something, because I read that they had gotten rid of Malice Mode. Wow, this is fun. We're just so stinking powerful. The Brain of Cthulhu is getting melted here. Oops. It just flew out of nowhere. We got good old King Slime. I wonder, we should probably have Ruthless Endogenesis selected so we can buff the damage on the Endogenesis. And if I remember correctly, yeah, this has four different modes that it switches between. And so it, it's, it's kind of like a mini cryogen going through the different phases. Well, I guess this is a good time to do the outro for this series. It's been a ton of fun. Um, sorry once again for the big unexpected delay in the middle of the series. I should be posting a little bit more frequently nowadays. Hopefully I can keep that schedule and post at least, you know, like once a week or something. Hopefully more than that. I've been posting more than that for the rest of the series. But I'm thinking for the next series, like we've got like 1.4 stuff to do, like with the T-Mod Loader. And I kind of want to go into 1.4. The only problem is not all of the big mods have updated for it. And so I'm thinking it may be good to do maybe like a Calamity Melee series. I know I've mentioned that. I was thinking of doing like Elements Awoken or maybe Thorium, but I think both of those are still in the old uh, 1.3.5, which I'm definitely interested in doing um, the old T mod loader stuff as well. I think for the next series though, it'd be really fun to play modded Journey's End, um, since I only really played Journey's End a little bit for maybe like a month or two. Um, I did the Wendy, the Melee series, that was good. but. I haven't played it since, so it'd be fun to see a lot of that content. I've kind of forgotten a lot of the things they added in 1.4 now. And then hopefully by the end of our Calamity Melee series, there will be lots of mods that are updated for 1.4, and we can jump into, you know, something like Thorium or Mod of Redemption or something like even Spirit Mod would be fun to play again and try a different class. There's so many mods out there, and definitely suggest because. I've not played all of the mods by any means. I've only played a, a few outside of Calamity. And so I want to know what all of your favorite mods are and which ones I should consider over the next year or so. Oh, another question I had before I start the next series is if we should do it on Master Mode or on Expert Mode. I'm not really sure what the benefits are of doing Master Mode for like a Calamity Revengeance series. I definitely want to do Revengeance because I love the drops. And I might do Death Mode and then just switch it in post Moon Lord content to Revengeance or something. I might even do straight Death Mode the whole time as Melee. Um, I think with some practice and being used to the game again, I'd probably be able to pull it off. But my question is if Master Mode adds much other than just increasing the health of all the enemies and stuff like that. Um, because if, if it's really not that worthwhile, I might skip it, just so I don't make the playthrough too um, difficult or too tedious. So yeah, let me know um, what your thoughts are on that, because I'm definitely interested to hear. See how fast we can kill this boss, <laughs> like instantly with Rage and Adrenaline. That was fun. Okay, let's go ahead and try the Universe Splitter, and see if we can get this boss to stay in the beams. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe Plantera will get in the big beam. Yes! A few of the beams hit. Not the big one, though. I really need to be using this universe splitter more often. So good. And another thing is, I am probably going to film a little bit farther ahead with my next series, so I can maintain a better upload schedule. So if you have any big suggestions for a Melee series, definitely let me know early on. Well, I think that's probably enough boss rush for today. I had a great time with this series, like I said, and I appreciate all of those who tuned in even and especially after the long break. So if you've enjoyed this series, be sure to like and subscribe. I've got a whole bunch of other series to check out too if you haven't seen those. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with my next Terraria series.